Is that Canadian striking? No. See, you no. guys are committed to what you do, not compromising. <laughs> oh, I'm writing. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> Guess yeah. what? Guess who's not striking? Me. Yeah. I don't get yeah, any exactly. of this written down, okay? Yeah. It's all Ooh. off the dome. Who am I? <laughs> 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 I did that joke on the podcast. I, I, we might have cut it out. <laughs> I'm fine with it. I, I like it. But, uh, we have a small amount of tact, unless it's the Patreon episode in which we let me say some like probably not great ideas. Yeah. Assume, I'm, we're just assuming that. U.S. immigration won't listen to the Patreon-only episodes. <laughs> They're not wasting. They don't have the budget. It's the podcast of a generation with me, Miles Dobson. This week's guest is the co-host of the Sad Boys podcast and an ex-Navy SEAL, Jordan Adika. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the show. Uh, me? I'm here with Jordan. Jordan at Jordan Adika is here. Well, th thank you so much for using my, my biblical name. Yeah. Yes, that my, is your my chosen full non yes. plume. Yes, indeed. How are you? I'm good. I woke. I was very late to the podcast. I appreciate your discretion and tact it's and fine. kindness. It's fine. I have uh, no life. It's fine. It's okay. Don't cry. Will you do strike? Uh, <laughs> I support the strike. Relax. Keep it all in. But I. Then, Whatever. Gonna, I'm going to put a counter on for how many times you make that same joke. How many times it's all over for me. Yeah, yeah. How? What are we drinking today? I have gone for... Oh, you have it in, in a concealed cup, so it's a little surprise. Well, no, I just... They, they overfilled my oat milk, so... I, to spoilers, so I had to put it in a giant bashed up cup, but it, please continue. Yeah, spoilers, it's a big glass of oat milk with... Uh, with a bunch of it's made with love though it's a lot of spit a lot of you know stuff like that why what did you get uh, we i went for my my classic along with this this fine lady's classic you're not in frame don't worry oh, she's crying she's screaming oh, she's throwing right. up <laughs> oh she's dead <laughs> thank god great inheritance or whatever <laughs> what is it when, when your partner dies <laughs> that's how it works inheritance yeah that's just robbing yeah, yeah, yeah. them Mm -hmm. It's just grave robbery. Um, we're sm we're smoking a uh, uh, ice latte with oat milk. This one yes. has a hint of vanilla. Um, oh, you didn't tell me to get. A hint I didn't of ask vanilla. for that. <laughs> oh, you didn't ask for it. I got oh, for, damn. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I got it for Katie, but I did not get it. Um, I did not ask for it for myself. But they were very busy. Oh. Um, shout outs. I'm not going to say the name, but shout outs to that coffee place. Yes. So you, you went for you went the independent route, oh. defying all defying all Los Angeles social expectation to go to Starbucks. You went to an independent coffee shop. Brother, one, I guess I'm just a great guy, and two, I don't have a car, and they're the nearest one. <laughs> it's a little of both. Uh, yeah, we yeah in our area we don't really have. Um, it's it's I was going to say an up and coming area, but that's just the tack to say gentrified and like yeah. stolen from the local yes. community. Yeah, um, it is a really nice area. We it's mostly not gentrified. So the like caps are still pretty nice and like been owned for 30 years and stuff. It's chill. It's like nice. I like it. I don't nice. say where it is. No, no. <laughs> um, we're not. It's not necessary. Don't the neighborhoods of LA are like not very big. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, East East LA. I do. A patron yeah. of Sad Boys did recently see me at the cafe that we reference on the show a lot because if we have a guest, we get pastries from there, and they were very kind enough to swear to secrecy. Yeah, because we do explicitly say like Jarvis's old apartment, but my current one is like it's right by it. Yeah. You can practically see the place. Yeah. But do you think, is that, is that, are you, uh, do you feel like you're having to do that more and more? Um, the anonymity less so, I to be completely frank, uh, and maybe a little weird about it, me personally, uh, if I didn't live with Ethan, me and Ethan is online, we live together here, and uh, I would probably be less cagey about it. But I, I want to respect uh, his preference, his, his, you know, everyone's preferences typically lean towards wanting to be anonymous with that stuff. And I, I wouldn't say exact address, but I, you know, uh, I, I think the, 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 I'm not overly worried about it. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to be respectful. I've never had a bad fan interaction. 
no. You, I, I don't think it was my demo. I think do, I had, do you, do you, yeah, soy. Well, I mean, the wolf pack are pretty chill, right? The wolf pack are chill. They're uh, pretty um, tumbler-pilled kind of softies, you know? <laughs> so I think um, I really like my demo a lot. I think I'm very fortunate. It's like uh, 70 some, 71 I think percent women. I mean, these are only logged in users yeah. to be fair, but those are the ones that yeah. comment and talk. Seventy-one percent women, eight percent non-specified, which can be anything, but is at least like that's cool. I, I yeah, at least hope there's there's a good portion of the audience that's non-binary and trans. I think that's like neat. And then I think it makes means that my content is uh, not, doesn't feel exclusionary, which I, I, I like and. The remainder being the fellas, the freaking boys. Uh, and how how much of that do you do you uh, attribute to just pure sex appeal over over content? Because I've got to be honest with you. What's the number above a hundred? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, because I, I full disclosure, I told several people that i had you on the show today and and to paraphrase all of them like oh <laughs> don't mind if i do uh -huh. um that's very nice of them um mm. maybe Brit british helps too british contributes yeah um, yeah did you did you when you sorry i interrupted you go ahead no i mean i don't have a, any kind of conclusive mm. answer I, I think i'm a, a, a good enough looking guy and i think i try and make the presentation of both shows mm. uh pretty pretty nice and and i mean it's it's in your case like there is you're a good looking guy you okay put effort well, into listen, the space this is, all right this is this is interviewing you sir all right okay. come on all right what are you drinking <laughs> I'm drinking the same thing as you. That's the whole bit, Jordan. It's the whole bit of the thing is you tell me your drink. I get the same thing. We talk about it as an opening salvo on the interview. Hey, brother, lock me up. <laughs> if being myself's a crime, freaking throw me in the damn gulag. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in a silly mood. I am I'm a little That's drowsy. fine. Don't That's even fine. talk to me until I've had a, a few coffees. Yeah. Oh really? Do you need you need several to get going? I used to. Now I in the I hate saying this because it boomer codes me, but I it's like my stomach can't handle it. <laughs> oh like, yeah. My, and also just I don't know what happened. The, I just get shaky now. Too much caffeine. I just start, oh really? Start shaking. Yeah. You get the you get the shakes. I also Apparently eating bananas is good now, with that. So it's like maybe less important. Oh so yeah, maybe, it could be that. At one point in time, it was like the thing that was giving me focus and clarity and, and making me able to be sociable now it's now actually straight yeah. up i think i could quit but i really like the i like the rhythm of it i like the routine it's the mm -hmm. thing that gets me out of the house the habit. in the morning the habit yeah and it is it's all maybe a little expensive i do think it's i think it is comparable to smoking to be honest it's like <laughs> i don't know if i go to like the cafe every day it's like 12 dollars <laughs> to get that and like a granola bar or something absolutely and absolutely that's american dollars it's American dollars. So, Canadian, Canadian. It's about seventeen. It's about Canadian's seventeen like dollars. Yen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Canadian is yen exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Canadian ruples is why. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a barter system. Mm -hmm. Yes, one beaver equals three coffees. <laughs> that's like a metaphor. <laughs> that's a, that, that's like a, a Canadian axiom, and it's what you tell children at night to stop, make sure they go to university. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Do well in school or you'll be farming the beavers out back. <laughs> oh, Papa. Do not, do not make me wrangle the geese or whatever you have. <laughs> Moose, uh, geese with antlers. Geese with antlers? The Canadian geese. The Canadian Is it true? Gooses. Is, um, what are they called? Uh, bull, what are they? Rocky and Bullwinkle? Yeah. Are they like the simpsons like are you, do you see merch of them around or stuff or is that time kind of passed no yeah. not at all i don't yeah. even think that i don't think that's a canadian product you're insane it has to be i don't think it is Fuck. i don't i honestly don't think it is no it's an it's american that's you've, been, you've been lied to you've been insane. lied to this is on the citizenship <laughs> test <laughs> i'm boned are you getting american citizenship I'm working towards it. 
we're doing a permanent status right now. We'll see. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's through the company. And I think it's fair to say that I'm pretty essential, at least to sad boys. <laughs> it seems like it would just be sad. It would be very sad boy. Sad boy. Yeah. yeah. Two very sad boys not recording. <laughs> you hear that, yeah. USCIS, if you're listening? And I know you are. Yeah, of course they are. They're I always used listening. to see them in your Twitch chat. <clears throat> These gold mm-hmm. boy. Yeah. Yeah. That's where they look. That's they where we met. In my chat. Well, not it your is chat. where we met. Be Absolutely. Yeah, I know. It's wild. I like I met so many people during lockdown just because of Twitch. And seeing that pivot's interesting because that's like man, I don't want to look back on the of isolation and the pandemic fondly in any way, but it's it's yeah. neat when you hear a story of somebody it being the impetus for a change they wanted to make as opposed to only having memories of like misery. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people kind of maybe not career-wise, but a lot of people seem to have kind of the last shattering moments during during the pandemic and lockdown where you know they they went in as like you know working in the finance sector and then they came out as like as like queer anarchists <laughs> that's, that's what hassan did there <laughs> yeah yeah they watched yeah. one hassan stream yeah exactly they watched one hassan stream and immediately their life and, and worldview was completely changed I uh, I have to avoid jokes like that because several times people have like, like if they if there's a photo of me and Hassan in the same room but yeah. not even the same photo or like something, people will be like, I can't believe Jordan and Hassan are together. Jordan hates Hassan. <laughs> like, I love this. He's great. He's really nice. I have, there's no history. I think it's literally just if you make. A, I think I retweeted the uh, like a meme about the shirt like yes. two years ago or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's got me indicted. I did everything why do you right. think why do you think that why do you think that is why why do you think that is are people just after the drama i think that's just a fervent audience and there's i, I would i think a lot of my demographic watches hassan and i i think our demo tickles uh fandom a lot and kind of and which i think is very valuable and and sweet but i uh, i think anything with um a lot of reverence can can turn a little bit or or causes panic i mean they when they would tweet about that it wasn't with criticism it was like i i hope they patch things up <laughs> there was never anything in the first place how many episodes happened already uh i've recorded f- i think you're the fifth one now Jesus. I think you're the fifth i don't know yeah yeah you're the fifth one fifth or sixth yeah yeah to be and, fifth. And I've got to be give me fifth please you want to be fifth place? If I see somebody fifth that I don't like, <laughs> I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm going to go That's bar it. me. Yeah, you're gonna to come to Toronto just to to turn up at my door with a, a a very large spiked bat. Yes, and I'm not going to ask where your address is. It's going to be a lot of me walking up to just any <laughs> any person from behind. Any they don't generic like looking like white guy. Just <laughs> just keep walking up to like a child. <laughs> Miles turning them around yeah. like ah oh, damn it. But I mean, you know. A baby we face. are similar. Me and most children are are pretty similar. So <laughs> that's the, yeah. the no, burden of beauty, you know. I know. I got that. I got the kid from Love Actually syndrome. Whoa. Maybe. <laughs> do you think you look like you as a kid? Yeah. Okay. Legitimately do. Legitimately do. Like, it, it, certain features on my face have not changed since I was born. Nice. And then there was just the awkward phase where the rest of my face started to catch up, and we're just on the tail end of that now, I think. Yeah, I you know, know I, was, I was the same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally born with the exact same eyebrows. It's like spooky. It's really like scary. That. That's to, so like, good, though. That was lucky. That's carried me pretty far, I would say. Not even for yeah. a stream or something would I shave my eyebrows. Not even for, no. I, I'm scared they won't come back. Yeah, I'm the same for like I'm the same for the because I get a lot of like compliments about the the amount of hair I have, which is a strange thing to compliment someone on. But mm. I'm really worried about ever shaving my head for a role or just just for like oh, yeah. it or whatever and then like it not coming back in any way close to what i would have previously i think it, the, what scares me about the eyebrows is the same thing that would scare me about taking off the eyelashes is that like well they don't grow past where they are right now so clearly they don't grow a lot i and how long would it take i kind of want to get one of those uh little slash through, you know yeah people can be like oh my god the bad boy of youtube 
Would you do um, like a piercing in the eyebrow or anything? Yeah, you got I mean, a lot I, of tattoos, but I don't know if you do. Do you do, you do the piercings? I used to have a nose piercing. I really liked it, and then it just fell out. Uh, Wait, was, in the, was, the septum one or in the in the? I bit? had a, a left whatever mm-hmm. <laughs> stud. The, left, the yeah. stud had a stud. <laughs> uh, I want that back. I liked that, but I was it was just it fell out, and I was in the process of moving, and I it just sealed up by the time I had my shit together um lost in the move yeah lost in the, i was lost in the source on that one but i want to get one i want to get ear piercing i think Whatever did you the... do that that bridge of the nose one i feel like i i, I mm. i've heard people say that there's an audible crack when that one's done mm. oh it's like the the cartilage or, oh, yeah no, I, don't want that. I don't want and i i don't think there's a limit to how you can kind of redefine yourself or or how you want to present regardless of where how you've presented up until that point, I don't think it has to be like some kind of gradual shift. I think you can just do it. And if you have a healthy support network, they'll they'll support you in that. But for me, I don't like t- tattoos and the piercing were things I was slightly intimidated by, but knew I wanted to ch- try. And then once I, and I know a like pretty low stake, well, I guess tattoos aren't, but uh, I <laughs> felt low stakes to me. And then once I did them, I felt pretty happy with the results. So I got addicted to it. Uh, haven't had one in a while. Getting how shaky. Many have you, how many have you got now? I don't know. I mean, if you count them, the, the little ones as independent, but you do a bunch of those at the same time, probably like 30. <laughs> I don't know. But that's counting like, you know, this at the same time. Or something. Yeah, like no, just for, for, for those that are just doing podcasts, you, John just pointed to his a little heart on his arm. A little heart. I, lo- I love love. <laughs> uh, I do. My very first one is uh, was actually from pan- mid-pandemic stream. And it was like... Oh, was a, it really? I don't know what... A, I'm, I'm at the standing desk right now. So no, no, like, it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, just remember, it's also an audio podcast, so you can just you can just describe it. You see it I appreciate the effort, though. If you were on the video, you can see Jordan tried very hard to lift his leg into frame from I'm, the standing desk. I'm 29. <laughs> uh, I'm an elder millennial. That's it. I, You're on the way out. It's all downhill from here, mate. For me, it's been rolling downhill. I'm at full speed. <laughs> it's been downhill since like my age started with a different number. <laughs> in single digits yeah uh, no, no it, i, I got a kirby you. with a knife in my cat well, that was the first one yeah that, that was, was that okay, was the voted on okay they, the audience was kind enough not to give me an among us which was also on the tournament bracket thought yeah i know can you fucking imagine <laughs> i mean if they if they didn't give you uh uh early access to the what is that, a movie or a TV show they're doing now? Are they doing a show of Among Us, They're really? doing an Among Us. That's they're doing so an Among Us, funny. Among Us TV show, I think. Hang on, I got to check this out. I think, yeah, TV show. I we got to go Among to the premiere. It's an, yes, it's an Among Us TV series. What? Uh, that is in pre-pro, and it's got the guy who did Infinity Train show running it. Oh, really? We watched the, I'd never seen it. Yes. And we just watched the first season last night. Yes, it's incredible. We, do you know the Among Us, the Among Us show that's in pre-pro right now is created and written by the Infinity Trade guy. <laughs> that's such a that's so conflicting. Yes. Yeah, it's it's just weird that that came up. We literally, I'd never even heard of it, and then last night we we binged it. And it's it's, it's absolutely it's one of the best animated shows. I didn't expect you... it to have so much momentum. <laughs> it's a train. <laughs> it's a velocity, if you will. <laughs> but it's not... I don't know. How do I describe it? Like, uh, it, I mean, it is very explicitly a feature film, right? Like, it moves... It's, what, 10 episodes, 9 minutes each. It's the length of a movie. But the... I just... I really appreciated, it, especially... I, mean, I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't seen it, but there's some... You know, fuck around with the stakes. and the theming isn't too over overemphasized it's like it's clear what the through line is but that that doesn't stop it from like and yeah i assume it's like a great uh, kids really enjoy it i I at least hope so It, it, it well i mean they did two more seasons and uh and then it was canceled and it was canceled because the exec says that it didn't have a definitive audience and i think that that is because uh 
I, I, it's interesting. I was and so I had um I had Keston uh, John on the show, um who did the voice of Hordak in She-Ra. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about, and he was also in Owl House, which if you haven't watched Owl House, I think you would, if you like Infinity Train, I think you would very much like Owl House as well. Have you, have you watched Owl House? No. Miles says anybody that likes Infinity Train would really like Owl House. She doesn't Finn. watch Owl House. She said, what the, she should shut the fuck I don't want to say that. <laughs> oh, she's raising her fist. <laughs> She's doing the Wakanda Forever. <laughs> I don't know how that applies. She's saying um, Bombay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they, they, I, I think he, Keston was saying that it's very much like that. Um, the execs really like having something uh, in a box. They can say, yes, this is the, this is the children's show. Mm. And anything that rocks the boat of it at being outside of the quote children's show, they just don't want to deal with any flack that might come their That's way. Such a funny idea. It's such a like. I mean, I'd never heard of the show, and granted, I'm not like the most proactive because uh, it's a cartoon for babies. <laughs> um, I just I'm kind of out of the loop with most re- uh, releases. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, kind of moving around so much and just kind of like rewatching stuff I was already familiar with. So I wasn't aware of it, but I'm definitely in the demographic. The te- I mean, we're in the tail end of the demographic, but certainly we're the ones that would have the kids that we show it to. And I had never heard of it. And I that seems like a very out of date understanding of like, of animation and the appeal. I mean, She-Ra makes its its downloads and money on adults. It makes it on Disney style adults, you know, hope punk yeah. people. Same yeah. with Voltron and Yeah. Yeah. That's that's it, a shame. It, it it definitely feels like the uh, that um millennials <laughs> This is the millennials episode. Guys. Welcome I to the millennials this. episode. This is, this is the millennials episode. Gamers, it we're def- reacting with Captain Jack Sparrow memes. <laughs> I'm posting the success, kid. Gangnam style. (laughs) It definitely feels like uh, millennials are still seen by uh, executives in multiple different uh, industries as teenagers. Yes. Well, they're an enemy, I feel like, still. They're the opposition. Yeah, they they've they've they they haven't figured out that like elder millennials are in their mid thirties, like late late thirties, early forties soon. Li- and literally, they have like the most disposable income of anyone. Yeah. Like- and kids, <laughs> they have disposable income and kids, and and these execs don't seem to understand that like, you know. We like the millennials were raised on like you know Justice League and and Batman the animated series and and you know these like pinnacles of animation and stuff. Maybe a couple so of the like bad not... boys watched uh, Batman Beyond and that's what made oh, gave them such mate. a sick and twisted comedic mate. mindset. May I could I could talk forever about Batman of Beyond, or as as it was in the UK, Batman of the Future. Because You're right. For some reason, Batman it Beyond was. is such a weird. Why I do they call that. it Batman of the Future? Or oh, it's like a uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a uh, Teenage Mutant Nin- Hero Heroes. That's right, Hero Turtles. Because you can't say, I guess you can't say Beyond in because that gives kids the impression that uh, the future exists. No yeah. way, because they called it the future. So. Well, the, um, the 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 beyond element implies that there is something beyond the empire. <laughs> that there is a, a world where you can escape surf them. Yeah, yeah, that's it. What do you mean, me, Lord? <laughs> it, it, oh, oh my goodness! You mean I may I may become landed gentry as well? Like, no, <laughs> he's in, he's just in the future. Just wait around. He'll be Batman in the future, not beyond <laughs> these borders. He's the same. Later, <laughs> Batman. Later, yeah, Batman. Later, that's that's the that's the follow up. Batman. Batman. Old. Later, Batman. Old. Young. Bat- young Sheldon. <laughs> young Sheldon. Yeah. Sheldon from yeah. the past. The Big Bang Theory is called Sheldon of the Future. <laughs> <laughs> right. I get, I, so I, stupid. I will never ever watch Young Sheldon, but for some reason, my YouTube Shorts algorithm is hysterical. It does not understand me in the slightest. And at one point, it was showing me Young Sheldon clips. And some of the clips were like, 
Sheldon, you got to learn this lesson. You got to grind. I'm like, I know he doesn't <laughs> because I've seen the Big Bang Theory and he sucks. He's still annoying. I don't like I appreciate that they tried to do a single camera after a three camera yeah. show. Like good for them for trying to do something different. But the thing that costs more money and makes less money. Yeah. Like that's not Big Bang fans are not like, you know what? I really need a character study of Sheldon. <laughs> And, and his family I can't name. Yeah, yeah. His southern it's, family. His southern family. No, I, it's, it's, I don't know, execs seem to have no idea, which is why I think the, I don't know, as a, as a content creator, I imagine you believe that uh, YouTube and TikTok and what have you are kind of the way to break go go forward with that go break i was gonna say break the mold but that sounds so like oh that's like cool 90s has anyone sounds... thought of that i'm kind of a jarvis of the future when you think about it <laughs> uh <laughs> two years younger than him and we've spent <laughs> like a third of our lives together <laughs> yeah i barely know that to him as a clip later <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna send it when there's co uh, contract negotiations please <laughs> genuinely <you> don't <laughs> uh i yeah i guess i mean i'm i'm i've never been one for i th i think the creative industry and especially new media by extension is such soft science. I don't think there is a lot of objective truth or a lot of advice to be given. I think there's like warnings that are pretty productive, like watch out for this. Here are methods to w live and work effectively. Make sure to live a life worth commenting on. Don't burn yourself out. You know, if you've never had like a proper job, um, you don't need one, but like, learn how those yes. work and yeah. how, to, how to balance your time stuff like that but as yeah, far as yeah. like the mythology of youtube i've never been a it's in my case for me and the work i'm i've always been a bit wary of because it's it's luck i mean a big portion of it is luck and, and the skill set i needed to do it was all luck i didn't tech i trained for and i felt like good at and i felt bad at it and then i felt good at, at it from working on it YouTube to an extent, but I had already been doing the pod. And then once we moved the pod to YouTube, that started, that was when it started getting the bigger audience. And that felt very, you know, it's not like a show we do research for the work, the prep for sad boys is when we see something weird online, we send it to the group chat. And that's like, I mean, to be completely candid, sad boys is I'm very fortunate that I don't do I barely do anything aside from the show, the recording. It is we have uh, two uh, two editors and our producer engineer that's on set, um, two other members of the team that are mainly involved with stuff outside of Sad Boys, but assist on all the Sad Boys stuff, uh, Anastasia especially. And it's just kind of I'd be adding friction if I tried to get more involved. It's not productive that way. I I've tried to do that. It, with other projects and it is just like when the right people are doing the right job it's only self-serving to butt in right it's just for the ego but uh that especially is it's like a perfect encapsulation of how much luck and circumstance can be bundled in with i mean literally any kind of success a patreon yeah, could have just not answered my email when i was in college and i could have just not gotten the job i could have not yeah you know, it, it's it, I, I, I'm yeah. rambling, but this this I came up yesterday. I feel like no, that's not rambling. It's very, it's this is a very informative train of thought you were going with. That's not rambling. I think me and, I think me and Katie were talking about it the other day when we were driving uh, from something. <laughs> driving from the house. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, we were driving back and just kind of talking about the. I was I was ranting as I sometimes do about. Mm. That I think there's a self-serving nature in um, celebrating the narrative of success a little bit in any space, but especially with creative where like, I, 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 I look, most of the time, I don't like to believe that the happiness and success and, and in this case, like views and audience are a zero sum, but they can be. It is, it is, you are trying to do, the more people that are getting views, it is kind of a, 
I mean, new people are watching YouTube every day, but the pool is, 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 you know, the, you're trying to get the attention of the watch time of is static, pretty static, especially if you're genre specific. And when people ask like, how do I get into this or do this? I'm like, I don't know, just do find something. Don't do it with any kind of guarantee and assume that you won't like doing the thing you start with forever. Exactly that. I we were watching we watched Infinity Train. It kept, kept making me think about my old D and D podcast because it, it's yeah. got kind of an RPG element to it. A table it does RPG. a little, yeah, absolutely. Lots of like little high concept encounters, and then like how do how do we resolve this one? And they do, and then they the narrative yeah, yeah, is the next train. in the background. Yeah. But it's yeah, I, I actually that was maybe my favorite thing about it. It just felt like listening to like the Adventure Zone or something. <laughs> or I guess Arcs, the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it made me think about that a lot. And ultimately, I do want to do it again one day, but it's just not. Those, it doesn't, there's, I had no money in it and a lot of time into it. And that's like, that was at one time what I thought. This is, this is the thing. This is forever and exactly what I want. What I did not think it was is rambling and telling bad jokes while yeah. looking at some wonky TikToks. Yeah. You know. I guess, I guess it's, it, that's, that's very, there's a very similar overlap with, with, you know, with acting and, 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 uh, you know, with, um, you know, I was talking in, I, Jake Boy Arts was on, on the show and you talked oh, yeah. about his, about his art, you know, and the way that he kind of fell into what he's known for online and those kind of things. And it's, I think it's more about, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I I think it's there, there's this kind of idea on the outside of it that that the people that get you know n- n- known for things will will have been like they're, they're they're envisioned to have been like yes I'm go I can't wait to get this sad boys podcast going mm-hmm. this is the one you I can't wait for this sad boys podcast to hit the ground running and make me the, and it's like that's not even close to what it is like i mean yeah we started sad boys in its in its lava form in 2017 and then did it on and off for five years four years and then i mean we had a platform on youtube so we started doing on youtube and it translated but that was not like we knew we wanted to do youtube at some point but jarvis hadn't even started doing it full-time when we started Sad boys. So if you were like, keep doing sad boys for ha- like for two and a half presidential terms, and then it will get an audience. It's probably not a pitch I would have taken at the time. Yeah, that is the that is the accredited YouTube uh, time frame is per presidential run. That's the rules. <laughs> That's when they swap out the, the CEO and they start making bonkers <laughs> decisions. Well, how does that? Yeah, because I mean, that's also something that kind of happened and is still happening is like the 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 algorithmic changes that happen to different platforms in the yeah. space of from you starting YouTube to you know Instagram changing their algorithms and and the UI layout during the pandemic to like TikTok and those kind of things how does that Twitch how, becoming like, so creative Twitch first. becoming the 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 oh the the hellscape that it is now I'll rag on uh, I'll tell her some I don't, I don't think it's confidential fuck it uh, I'll, I'll tell her the, <laughs> off, an offhand story I just might not get invited back to the next one I'll tell an offhand story about Twitch in a sec but yeah the um remind remind me to rag on them uh I think I'm lucky in that the exact thing we do in commentary is very broad at this point but all commentary like personality led commentary stuff is a little bit recession proof li- literal recession but also like the recessive elements of advertising or if there's a dip and and people tend to always watch short to medium form people they like chat about stuff it's it's, it's very low lift and very low tension and usually pretty pot like uh mood positive i youtube right now i think has the most linear path to success that it's ever had like there are it's still soft science but as far as um i mean ludwig has a video about it and then there are some response videos to it that that it that like rep, like showcase that it really is the case is like you can with a lot of tact and strategy you can make a successful youtube channel 
providing you are not invested in the type of content you're making. You have to be like mm-hmm. pretty cynical about what the output is, mm-hmm. um, which is I th- completely valid. I don't think there is anything wrong with that, but it is a, um, it's just a different kind of thing. It's a little bit like being a, and it's a, it's kind of like being an engineer or working in product or something like that, where you can work on something, you can work at American Express and facilitate all the online services, work in the infrastructure or something and make ridiculous money but maybe far, uh, uh, walk, miss out on some like experiences or personal growth or developing a little bit of intuition or satisfaction. But you can, you know, it, 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 in a way it kind of sucks. Like if somebody's like, how do I be successful on YouTube? And like cynically be like, do nothing but love to him. He's a perfectly nice guy, but like daily dose of internet is he got it. He did it right. Like he did exactly the thing you need to do. And then he transitioned from short, he, he has long form content that works because he's very proactive about getting people into it. The, I mean, shorts has become a really good, I, I'm very thankful for, the, for short time. They're like, I mean, they're a good, a lot of people find sad boys through it, but I think it's a cool craft. I know a lot of people that just, that's an, that's an art form. People that are good at, at shorts, uh, Ludstein especially. But anyway, just like Ludwig made a video about starting a channel and just making it a success without any references to him or he started mm-hmm, it completely mm-hmm. flat. Yeah. Who knows, but it, in regards to the thing you said about the algorithm, I think YouTube, I'm hesitant to st- start streaming again because I would be doing it on YouTube. It would get more numbers and I don't want to do too much Twitch stuff for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. But I'm also hesitant to put all my... Ducks in one basket or whatever. Yeah. Or my duck eggs. Duck eggs in one basket. Or putting all my ducks, but they're inside eggs still. All my fertilized eggs in my fertilized basket. Yes. Baby duck eggs. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Fertilized basket sounds really sinister. Uh, Great band name though. (laughs) We are all fertilized band. They're one of those Midwest bands where the the album photo is like their childhood house. Yeah. With a rusty bike outside. And the first track is called Sarah. Sarah, I wanted to go to the prom, and you said maybe another time. But there's only one prom, so I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Can we do this? Should we no, actually do this? Same here. <laughs> Arctic Monkeys aesthetic, like early era Arctic Monkeys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I think algorithmically it's like a good time to be certain types of creators. But I know a handful of people that have kind of had to pivot. I mean, that's that's the main thing is pivoting. <laughs> You're gonna they're gonna see you when you go out the door anyway. <laughs> you just she just army crawled. <laughs> that's so funny. That's great. There's confirmation for the tweets we get asking if we're dating. There you go, you little freaks. This that's this. I'll, I'll cut that out if you want to keep that. If you want to keep that, uh, we'll, no, we'll, fine. we'll cut it's, it. This is our official announcement. <laughs> oh, wow, mate. Scoop. I'm, I'm, I'm honest. Uh, Welcome I'm, to the I'm Scoop honored. Troop. That's Scoop Troop. I love it. Yeah. But do you think, do you, so do you think that the, that the, because you said shorts is like really, you know, uh, great for growth and what have you. Do you think that's the same with TikTok? And also, follow-up question, what's wrong with people on TikTok? Because TikTok is is an insane place sometimes. I think TikTok is the most interesting thing on the internet. Yes. I think it has well, this, I mean, like... Judging by your videos, I can tell, but... Oh, <laughs> I, think, I just think it's... I think it's a... Um, not to be too wanky about it, but I, oh, I, just, I do think there's something to... Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit like what... All online content is promised to be, which is, hey, you've got a phone, you can make your own feature film with, yeah. without accounting yes. for like the resources required to make things look good or and thus be like approved. Or you can you can make a movie with bad video. You can't make a movie with bad audio. People notice something. It, the, it, the brain just can't handle it. You have to have fidelity in, in the ears. People wear a lot of people wear glasses. Not a lot of people have like aberrant hearing. It's it's people just struggle with it. Um, I feel the same way about a lot of creative output. Don't get me wrong. 
me, you, everyone that, that does anything AV, we all overthink it. And ultimately, people don't stop listening to it, especially like a nonfiction thing because of audio, video, anything like that. But it does always feel a little exclusionary to be like, you can make your own movie with just your phone, but also 10 hours a day free. And like, no, no exhaustion <laughs> from your job. And, and yeah. Whereas TikTok yeah. is truly like, it is, it's a good discovery platform. This, it's not very sticky. Even if you have like a successful TikTok, like if I get a video that gets double the normal views, I get double the subscribers from it that I would another one. If I get a, if I would did TikTok or when Sad Boys does TikTok and we get uh, generally uh, Instagram Shorts, we get like a lot of views on that one. Instagram's going to transfer to YouTube more than TikTok, and YouTube's going to transfer to YouTube videos more than those two. But YouTube, I feel like, is so invested in its alt right pipeline. And 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 just uh, translating its audience into the one that makes them the most money, which is a little—I wouldn't even say older, but just seem more cynical. It's a little bit more insidious, even. Uh, hence the alt-right pipeline stuff, including me. Like it's constantly giving me Rogan clips and and like Shane Gillis right. stand up and, and Ben Shapiro stuff. And don't get me wrong, right. I enjoy Ben Shapiro. I think he's the funniest <laughs> man online. But he is, I laugh at him. And I don't yes. think I'm not going to buy his, you know, pills called like strong leg. Take this pill. Have you ever noticed that you're miserable all the time? That's because your legs are too not strong enough. Or here's a scapegoat for improving yourself. It's wild. Is it your? It's actually everyone else. <laughs> Do you feel bad? That's not you. No. Yeah. It's actually all women. <laughs> <laughs> come to think of it yeah i checked yeah. and it's every woman it's every woman yeah that's the that's the I, I believe that comes from the peterson manuscript oh, dude oh my god dude the only time i've i i <laughs> endorse people to try talk therapy and and me personally i like pragmatic like to do's and so i my psychiatrist is very emphasis on psychiatry it's like a very medical conversation we talk about the the lifestyle stuff but then that's the conduit for talking about medication because i have a support network that i'm pretty comfortable talking to mm -hmm. um it changed a little over the pandemic because i was so isolated back in the uk but then now i've transitioned back to comfort chatting about difficult stuff and the podcast helps to a degree now that that's there again i, I really do just want to be like these meds, there's a little much. This med's perfect. This, what are we mm -hmm. experimenting? Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. I have self-implemented some like CBT strategies and explored stuff like that. Not nearly as much as I can, but it it's helpful. What I didn't get much value out of was the two times I, the two practitioners I tried talk therapy with. And I think one of the reasons for that is just like the, they tend to hone in on certain topics that I'm not particularly interested in in working on. There's like, mm. and and you know, experiences like as an example, I have my parents were never together. They like my dad was in the tradition of uh, my <laughs> me and him was deported. <laughs> uh, he was deported like back to Kenya when I was not even one, right? And so stayed in touch but they weren't they didn't hadn't stayed together anyway it was like very amicable but it was not a, a relationship prior or anything and they one of them just kept asking me about that and pushing on that and i'm like i know it's truly not denial it's just not a thing that i've ever been burdened by it is always very satisfied with, with my mom was a great single mother i have no i have only good memories or like uh, only good influences. I have nothing where I think back. I'm like, ah, if only, if only the fellas were around, I could have, you know, I would have grown a mustache sooner. Whatever. Uh, I could ask him if we are going bald, because I, I my hair is a little thinner, and he's always had no hair. I'm like, are you, are you like Andrew Tate? You just shave it, or you usually have a beautiful head of hair like Andrew Tate, right? He looks hilarious. Yeah. He looks like uh, uh, Andrew Tate, I mean, right Tate? now. Oh, this yeah. fucking he looks like Gallagher. He's 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 going full uh 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 Luther, isn't he? He's full Lex Luther <laughs> now, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> the top G. The original top G. Uh, but yeah, but the talk therapy I got just annoyed by, but I mentioned it because the crappier one that I had 
mirror certain online me- mental health service, which maybe uh, doesn't do a great job of syncing you up with the right person. It was just some cracker <laughs> that just like his pitch was uh, he immediately after one session was like, read these. Uh, the Body Keeps the Score, which is about, which is actually not a bad uh, book from what I read of it. And the TED Talk's pretty good. But the, and then, and then for lifestyle tips, 12 Rules for Life by a guy called Jordan Peterson. And I laughed out loud. <laughs> and then when he asked, like, what, what was funny about that, I'm like, I just, I've already read it. Yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't get enough of it. Yeah. Be a lobster and fucking clean your room or whatever. Wow. Eat meat only, Jordan go Peterson. insane. Do oxies. <laughs> wow. Eat red meat. Eat just red meat. Until it puts you in the hospital. And you, YouTube shorts come up on Jordan's feed where uh, you're like, it makes me incredibly sad, actually. I don't like to only eat meat, but I have more energy and I feel stronger than ever. And then he's, you know, shaking like a, a cold dog on like New Year's Eve, fireworks going off. He's like, I've never felt better in my whole life. He looks like a. He looks like a, if I didn't love Whippet so much, I would make that comparison. <laughs> he looks like a a, a, a sad Whippet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or a ferret. A ferret. Yeah. I don't know. Ferrets seem a bit more wily than I, I give him credit for. Yeah, they're smart. They're tactful. Sure. They've got a lot more like wisdom. Shout out Jordan Peterson. Thanks again for writing all those other books called like Chaos and the Woke Media. <laughs> Thanks for being the only other thing that puts Toronto on the map. Other than <laughs> oh, our shit. I didn't crack think of that. Smoking, crack smoking mayor and Jordan Peterson. Thank you. We appreciate <sighs> your service. Oh, dude, your little mayor is so funny. Uh, oh, yeah, our ex mayor. He is, he is fully dead. He is. Oh, shit. He, he, is, he is now. Now we got Olivia Chow. Who is, <laughs> now we've got who is Hunter mayor, Biden. <laughs> Hunter Biden just crossed the border, took over. No one asked. No one asked. Yeah, that's it. Just, just showed up one day. I think Hunter Biden might be a Sasha Baron Cohen character. I think he's so funny. <laughs> and I know he's done like horrendous shit and I put him in the same camp as like, you know, the alt-right hogs we're talking about where, not yeah. because he's alt-right, say, but he just does terrible shit. But every now and then you just have to be like, oh, that's so funny. It's so funny that the president's son just had left a laptop at a repair store and never came back because he was busy taking dick pics and doing crack. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> I wonder if that was Hillary's laptop story. Right? I, I it's it's it, having worked in phone repair, I used to work at the car phone warehouse. Yeah. I used to work at the car phone warehouse for Geek Squad as oh the phone God. repairs guy. I was the I had the fake clip-on tie and the it was it was horrendous. But the amount of yeah, those little uh, seats. You know, like little desk seats almost. Yeah, yeah front yeah, to yeah, back. Yeah. Like yep. you got yep. a three or something. Yep, that was us. And the amount of people, I mean, first of all, the state that people keep their phones in is atrocious. I had one woman <laughs> pull her, fo- she said, my phone's not working. I said, okay, she pulled it out of her bra and it was caked in makeup. That's it was awesome. the most revolting thing I'd ever seen in that's my life. That's so sick. That's, so that's, the, that. that's the curse of the no pocket pants. <laughs> yeah this is it They've ladies this is why you need you need pocket pants ladies listen up okay listen <laughs> so, 13 rules for life the extra one is don't it'd be good get better pants get better pants the Honestly, 12th come on. rule is stop ruining men's lives by not having sex with them oh my god do you think it's do you think okay I'll, let me finish the, 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 they they the the amount of data that people just like don't care is exposed to people uh, oh, yeah. that are working on their phones is bizarre to me. There was someone, there was like, someone had that brought their laptop in that we needed to fix. And it was just full of like, uh, 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 not like top secret, it didn't have top secret written on it or anything, but there was clearly like NDA signed documents that they were not supposed to be mm-hmm. available for public viewing. Uh, Didn't care. Just gave it to the gave it to the random guy who works minimum wage to fix a laptop. <laughs> my, the Wi-Fi password in my old apartment was, um, and this is why I say old apartment is uh, password. The password is just password. And password. the reason is that my friend that works in security at the at, at, at uh, our tech company in the San Francisco area, he was like excellent at what he did. No breaches at his company led the team in that kind of stuff and he had an equally simple password at his apartment mm. i'm just like mm. is this seems like exactly what you 
you're like a, a Gordon Ramsay ordering DoorDash. Like, how the fuck? What is this? And he just said, like, look, if someone wants your data, they're going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> like, they don't, you can, the password has no impact on that. What you need to do is just not put up your, like, blood type on your, a note on your phone. Yeah. Or, like, implement one degree of security, encrypt anything. Yeah. People just don't I know. think that's, well, that's the thing. Like, do you care about the... Because I think there's a lot of pushback on TikTok and all those kind of things about, well, China is going to get your data and stuff like that. And I'm like, for me, I'm like, China's probably already got it. Like, I, yeah. I, I, I feel like any data that, that is kind of uh, risky for me, it's probably already been stolen by someone without me realizing. Yeah, I... The thing I realize the older I get is that you don't have to, I believe that you do not have to practice your principles to have them. <laughs> like, <laughs> praxis is not the only way to believe stuff. You can be a Catholic and not go to Sunday Mass, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel the same way about a, f a few things. One of them is Amazon. I yeah, am, I they, they're horrible working policies and I could not be more on board with unionization. But at the same time, yeah. I have in... My in my time using Amazon, I have absolutely spent more than twenty thousand yeah. dollars. <laughs> like I furnished I, every apartment yeah. with it. I move a ton. All my recording equipment is from Amazon. I know. I just bought a bunch on Prime Day. <laughs> there's just no. There's just no way, right? I um, know. But and, and we're on Twitch. Oh yeah, and all, and all my gross, all, all my, my my fucking bounty rolls and shit are coming from Amazon. There's just no, yeah. and uh, you know, no ethical consumption to capitalism or whatever, but. I think you can be harmful or you can be apathetic. In the case of Amazon, you can be, in my case, apathetic. Or if I were to come out against the guild, or, uh, against work unions, <laughs> then that would be harmful. You know, that's like a yeah. step, but maybe a little too far, which is, of course, what I believe. But I'm I'm not gonna say it because of my soy ass woke ass audience. Right. Don't forget but to. The, I mean, but the writers, the writers are clearly just you know. Don't forget to go to HelloFresh. <laughs> 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 just yeah. kidding. Don't. I don't. It's. I don't have a sponsorship right now with them, so don't do it. No, and, and no one wants to sponsor this anyway, so you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Oh no. Whoa. No, no, not in frame. All good. Was, I may have almost never been in frame. <laughs> right at the beginning because you opened the door. I, I would say, actually, when you looked normal, the only thing that was weird was when you crouched down under the ground and began scooching. It looked fucking sick. Yeah, I mean, it was like fire and I'm actually jealous. I mean, jealous. we didn't get it. We didn't get it on camera, so I don't know. Oh, like, shit. we'll just have to take your word for it. What were you talking about before? Twitch. Amazon we were talking stuff. about Twitch and Amazon and no ethical consumption. Yeah, I the, the more I kind of dabble in that, the less committed I feel to... Uh, it, oh, we were talking about data and, and TikTok. stuff. And I feel TikTok the same way data. about yeah. the security of my data web. Like, I, I know the practices are pretty fucking abhorrent. Mm. And I'm also in the same boat. It's important to know that we... I don't know how old you are, but we are older than the age of people that are given this information before they've signed up like this this mm -hmm. this knowledge about how data is being scraped and, and utilized and sold yeah predates like teens signing up for tiktok this is like new and a lot of them don't use facebook which is was the way i'd certainly like lost my data first right oh yeah for sure i yeah. am staunchly in the boat of oh man i i, I you are going to have to compromise how much you can engage with culture and uh, online culture and like maybe where all your friends are and the things you consume for the benefit of maybe not getting too much of your information stolen i feel like i think yeah i think it's degrees of how much data rather yeah. than like unless you live in a cave what you can do is just reduce what you share and like but, but even out. then though but like like I mean, I think it's Facebook or Instagram or both that like if you are on the same Wi-Fi network as someone else, it it like knows to like look up that person's share like search history and then start suggesting ads to you as well. So like it it's like even if you don't have Facebook, your 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 information's Oh yeah. It's we it's very like 
it's very clear when me or Ethan have sh- are buying a new piece of equipment or something. <laughs> like I just got back into, I just set up a new mu- like a music production space upstairs. And the moment I didn't even buy anything, the moment I re-downloaded all of my like virtual plugins for that, all my Instagram ads are now. And on out and about VPN on, I slash Jordan Dicker, no specific one. I'm going to commit without money. Yeah, uh, there's I I was literally just checking the location of uh, walk-in tattoo place I like, with the thought of like, hey, maybe if they're free today. It's a weekday, maybe. And by doing that, and then coming home off VPN back on network, all I was getting was like, hey, you ever thought about spending a lot of money on ink on your body? You ever thought about getting a temporary tattoo? And I'm like, it doesn't feel the same unless I know I'm making a mistake. That's the rush. <laughs> This Kirby can just disappear. What's the point? Yeah. No, I I, I agree with you. I think it's I, I think it's um you can have your morals. I mean, I think I think it's it's a bit naive to think that you can avoid any of this really. And it's more about, you know, advocating while in using the system rather than uh trying to advocate by cutting off your ability to be part of culture or be part of be part of like you know it's like people go well you're on an iphone yeah okay exist in the world without a smartphone <laughs> advocate for change without a phone <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah exactly i'm living Good in luck. the woods yelling out into the you know a quarry that zuckerberg should be that putting the guillotine <laughs> yeah i got my picket and i got my <laughs> megaphone in a quarry the sound like the echo sounds great so i don't know it sounds loud to me i uh it, it it is in part a joke, but every time I I make it or reference, I do think more and more like, could this be me? There's a tiny part of my brain that's like, okay, content's done, sold my tech stock, set for cash, I'll take a satellite phone with me or some, something, and just move into a rural Japanese forest with a katana and a kimono. Uh, go completely anonymous for like 10 years, like a time jump, and then come back to the West speaking fluent Japanese with like uh, a scar over my eye and like uh, one oh, yeah. white eye. And uh, uh-huh. they, they people are like, hey, where have you been? I'm back on the podcast. <laughs> come back on the show. And there's, there's people, it jumps just like, hey, what's up, man? How was your week? And it's got like, what does she go there? Noni. I mean, that's, uh, if nothing else, that would be a great bit for, uh, oh God, that reminds me so much. I think it was, uh, this is this is how little life I have when I watch interviews on, on late night. But I think Simon Pegg was being interviewed on one thing and he said that he did a bit on Twitter once where he said, I've heard this, there's been this random banging upstairs in the, in the loft. I think I'll just go and investigate. And then he didn't tweet anything for two weeks. Yes. We... <laughs> and then he came back down and then tweeted like two two weeks later. He's like, there was nothing up there and pretended as though he hadn't noticed a shift in time. Me and uh, uh, Katie are deep in the shit post community on, on Twitter. Uh, yeah. Her more is an art form. Yes. A craft. Yes. I, we, who was, who was it that like, had done a post about uh, finding a blood trail, and then oh, uh, this guy Francis. Is it a guy on Twitter, Francis? Had uh, who's also in the uh, the shit posting addicts environment. He, it's no judgment here. I'm a, I'm a sick, I'm a sick puppy, like like the rest of them. Uh, we just saw a post from. That account from what, like a few? They call. Oh yeah, the Grug posted a screenshot of that tweet where it's just the tweet from Francis is just a trail of blood and then bloody footsteps and should I follow it? Question <laughs> mark. And then was just like coincidentally taking a break from social media right after, and so there's just a bunch of. It's like classic shit posty people, some of them being like very sincerely like, I hope Francis is okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they 
That's right. They posted a fake death certificate, and it was like oh, mauled by an animal, some kind of animal. <laughs> that's so good. Bite marks are consistent with a wild animal. Oh god, I love doing that. That's that's the best. I oh, love yeah. I love when people have the 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 free time. To- I haven't been I haven't been pushing the bit lately, but uh, I am currently. I I highly encourage your audience to do exactly this, which is. It can't be too obviously a meme, and we can't do it too much. But my goal for the by the end of the year is to convince as many people online as possible that I used to be a Navy SEAL. For like, because there are enough discrepancies that are like a little hard to. So, like for example, one person, they, somebody was just posting it as a bit, and then another person was just like, "Is it you a fucking Navy SEAL?" And then <laughs> someone replied to that and was like, "Okay, first of all." In his in his bio, he said "Semperfy." Semperfy is not the. <laughs> not <laughs> word. Also, he's he's not American. So if he were to be in the Navy SEALs, he would have had to. So clearly, they're a fan too, because they were like, and he moved oh, here yeah. when he was twenty one. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, which yeah. I love. I love that there's like any kind of exploration because, of course, I wasn't a fucking Navy SEAL. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm built like plywood. Yeah. I'm built like a hey, backslash. Listen, you are you are just shoulders down. We don't know, Jordan. We I'm don't d- know. You I'm, could have legs the size of of like Honda Civics. We I'm, don't know. Look, I'm not in bad. I'm not. I'm I'm in okay shape, but I'm not like Geralt. I'm not built for the <laughs> for popping Bin Laden. <laughs> yeah, I mean you're a little late. You're a little late to hunt Bin Laden. But that oh, that's part of the bit is me being like, look, we know. We know the Navy SEALs from like media, from Call of Duty, from from Zero Dark Thirty. I like I get that, but you have to understand that SEAL Team Six and several other organizations are specifically highlighted because of their skill set. They they go on missions mm-hmm. and the like. Mm-hmm. Some of mm-hmm. us work in intelligence. Yeah. Some of us are, are working. They, we pilot more so, and, yeah. and everybody's got yeah. an interesting background. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I pivoted into tech, of course, because I was on the technical side of that team. And, yes. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Out of college, I just didn't have any cash. I wanted to. <laughs> it's, just like, it's just so funny to me because it's just a lie. Yeah. There's no right, art right. to it at all. It means I, nothing. I, I had an ex girlfriend who lied to me once and said that she worked for MI5. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. I, completely out of context, I had an ex girlfriend who told me she worked for MI5. We stopped dating after that. I have never heard from her since, and she's fallen off the internet. <laughs> So I don't know if she's actually really at MI5 or if more likely she just got married and changed her name and doesn't want to talk to me. But I just love the idea that it's up in the air. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, she was just like, uh, it was like, hey, honey, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before. Yeah, kind of. I got to take a trip to Dagestan and then just never came back. I mean, that's kind of what happened. Yeah, that's kind of what happened. I'm going to Lebanon for a long weekend. <laughs> My mum dated a guy that was probably a spy. A spy. It's yeah. Because in reality, like spies, it's mostly just like unassuming Paperwork. dudes that go to places and just kind of attend meetings and monitor stuff. And it's basically anybody in the public sector. That or can like attend public sector meetings that is like selling or giving that information to, to yeah, the yeah, yeah. UK government. And yeah, he yeah, was real. lovely dude. We used to go around and his his biggest passions were t- tree genus, like genus, like learning the genus of trees and going on walks to show them. And then I grew up in the country. And then um, and then soup making. Those were his things. And then he would just Life go soul. away for a month and a half. <laughs> and like we'd be like, where were you? And one time he'd say France and another time he'd say like Lebanon and then like uh New Zealand. It was like why? And I was yeah. just visiting family. Who? <laughs> what do you mean? Just fr- <laughs> in all of those places? And he's like, Yeah, I took a and I had a stopover in, in Iran, you know, while I was on my way home. I had a, a layover for two and a half weeks <laughs> at the same That's time wild. that like a journalist is killed or something. That's wild. <laughs> it was just like a, I, I guess, I guess you are, <laughs> I guess you are a spy because there's nothing I'm going to do with that information. Wow. What am I going to do? Dob you in to, yeah. Ooh, dob yeah. you in. You're welcome. Huh? Uh, do you have time? Can I? Can I? Do you have time for to answer an advice question? Sure. Awesome. 
The, this is, is that what we like do. This from, is the, uh, yeah, I, yeah. People, people, listeners, future listeners, and uh, people on, on my Instagram and what have you have submitted uh, questions for oh, cool. advice from random. They don't know who is they're answering the question to. So that's the bit. Great. Um, okay, so they didn't put their name on this one because they can stay anonymous. But uh, I'm an 18 year old female. I'm about to start a full time job in a big city. I'm scared of moving into a new chapter in my life as I've always had the same kind of routine and friends. It's the biggest change I've ever had, and I'm scared I'm going to fail in the, quote, real world, unquote, despite this job being something I've always wanted. I've done lots of research into the sector and the place that I'm going to. How do I get over this? Oh, boy. Um, you, I mean, you're moving. I, well, I mean, I chose this because we both have a bit yeah. of experience when it comes to big moves. And, and into stuff that we really wanted to do, but that you can't really get experience until you do it. Absolutely. There is no... Did, did I choose a good question or did oh, I choose yeah. a good question? Yeah, I mean, there's no academia to stuff like that, right? It is, it's, it's... Okay, two things. One, you're basically moving into the vaccine. Like you are moving into the exact thing that's going to inoculate <laughs> you to the problem, right? Yeah. Just being yeah, exposed yeah, yeah. to it is going to, the moment you're doing it, you will be a like unmeasurably small percentage of the population that's done it. And you'll also be, it sounds like they've done a lot of research and had a lot of ambition for this specific thing. You'll also be probably the most informed and enthusiastic of 90% of the people that even have that job. The other thing is, you established a community and a routine once. So it's one of the hardest skills to learn is the ability to learn. And I think mm. once you, the fact that you know you want a new network and you, you know you want to find something and the fact that you have a, a lot of people move to cities without a in-person job. And I think that it's like do a Groupon activity or something, find some people. And I think that's difficult because you also have to yeah. start it yourself. Yeah. Having a workspace, even if you just meet one person you get along with, that's going to cascade into more people. Um, that's kind of one messy little point. And then the other one is just you, it's a very trite point, but no one has ever been right when they had imposter syndrome. To have imposter syndrome, you have to have already done the thing. Because if not, having imposter syndrome about something you're not doing is just worrying. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. It's just anxiety. Yeah, yeah, which is a completely different episode. That's an episode of Sad, oh, Sad yeah. Boys, which you can listen to on Spotify and on YouTube. Roll through. Uh, There's also, yeah. um, I mean, it's a big city. I, where where are you from in the UK? Uh, London. We're in, we're in greater or? Oh, like, like uh, Hammersmith, Richmond. Okay, Britain, right. Okay, in your case, it's, it's different then, especially with how effective the tube is. But like in where I'm from, it's super remote. I mean, it was a big tourist town. It was Stroud, right? Like Gloucestershire is a lot of people coming through and a lot of people that work in London, but live there. Yeah. It's very important how much access to uh, diversity of experience. And let's say you meet this person, this theoretical person, and it's not that theoretical because there will be someone you get along with. It's just this number of people, especially you already have one shared interest and it's the thing you do that's clearly... Some people are very passionate about it. I don't know what it is, but there's always passionate people. And passion is like attractive. I the I mean, the one thing you can pretty comfortably guarantee is you're gonna have access to all this shit you didn't before. Like, hey, I could go to a Pilates class or something in my I went to Falmouth for com uh, comedy for college. Which is great. It's it's a, <laughs> it's, yeah, for, for yucks. You know the the highlight of of the comedy central. I in the fucking world might as well have. I didn't go to my classes. <laughs> uh, I was just riffing and kidding and being insane. I was just you know having a little fun, just um, hanging out with the friends, going to class, d d constantly doing drugs and drinking, and my <laughs> brain being permanently worse. <laughs> Oh, oh god but yeah there's no like there's so much shit you get to do there's so yeah. much like you that you will never run out of places to go and if just yeah. one of those places you find one person it's yeah. like a pyramid scheme if they have a friend and you have two more friends <laughs> yeah yeah they're, they're your downline yeah yeah it's a sales <laughs> it's pipeline a, to for yeah, being cool yeah, to, to success and, and coolness yeah how, how comfortably did you i mean london's big city toronto's a city city what did that was that do you think an easier transition than 
Um, well, because I lived in the country as well, so I've done I've done both. Where did you um, live in the country? Oh, I live I, I lived out in Norfolk. Oh my lord, I, oh, that's I'm, the country. That's the country, my boy. We were shooting my pheasants. honey roast lamb. <laughs> no, that's I think that's I think that's, that's more Cornwall. That, that's that's gloss. That's gloss. Right, yeah, yeah, my yeah. honey roast lamb. All right, my sweetie heart. My lover. Hello. All right, my lover. My lover. <laughs> so fun. I'm so I've shed all those now. I wasn't thick, but it was like it was there. Oh, oh yeah. Some, yeah. If I play like like a like a fighting game or something, and I, oh, it comes it, out when you get when you're. Uh, oh wow, if, really? If I, the thing I notice the most is if I'm just sat at home playing. Like I used to play like some Warzone, right? And I yeah, sucked yeah. shit, so I would yeah. just lose and I just go for fuck's sake. I just do that anytime I died. Oh, for fuck's sake. And then everyone just turned and looked at you because they have no idea what you were saying. Yeah, the the, uh, curb theme played. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, No, I I think think it's an opportunity moving. I think you should look at it as a positive because uh, it's any chance... Any time you move to a new place, it's a chance to reinvent yourself because all the people there have never heard of you. I don't know who you are. They don't. They don't know anything about you. They don't know that embarrassing thing that keeps you up at night from ten years ago in your high school. Which is a very different like alchemy. When when you mm-hmm. know people know you, it's not always a no. It's negative. But it's not always a huge benefit because it's people that have associations. And when you're in an environment, expectations do affect the way you speak and behave, and even even unconsciously, it's just like yeah. But Michael knows what I'm like. Yeah. You know yeah, I know. My my mod on my Twitch channel. Uh, v went to uni with me. That's a nightmare. <laughs> every, two, every two seconds, they're just like, "Hey, remember that time you sang at karaoke?" And no, I was like, "Oh God, I do not." Yeah, please You're stop. Lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that but time you lied? <laughs> stop. I think it's. I think it's very. I think it's a very good opportunity. I think that you uh, get the chance to reinvent yourself, choose your friends, and you have your chosen family and your support network, the people that you really actually want. If you have friends that aren't great, then good. You're getting rid of them. You're getting new friends. You're getting new people that are better for the person that you are. Couldn't be a safer bet, the fact that it's something you like. I really can't emphasize that enough. That's like... Absolutely. And that you're yeah. moving with a job. Yes. I've, I've, I never did the move pre... Like, it was with the job with Patreon, oh, but there was Oh, like, it was a nightmare. I came here with n- literally no plan. I moved to Toronto with nothing. And then I went, the first thing I did was uh, w- w- I walked down Queen Street in Parkdale and there was a, a poster for acting classes for, for people under a certain age on the thing, on, the, on, on like a, on a pole. And I went, oh yeah, I'll go to that. And that, that was how I started my acting career. <laughs> did you intend to do acting? Acting? Uh, I, I, well, I wanted to do New York. But oh, you can't get the that. visa. You can't do the... Yeah, for, yeah, I'm walking here, but you, uh, you you can't get the visa. And then I went on a backpacking website, and they were like, Canada. And I was like, oh, yeah, Canada's a place. Is it? And Canada is easy to... Yeah, because Commonwealth. You get a two-year working... You get a two-year working visa. Fucking hell, man. I do... Unironically, I think Toronto is my... If I don't get my next visa, at least temporarily... Um, you wouldn't do Vancouver? Because it's closer to LA that way. Yeah, well, without my visa, my travel is limited anyway. But I, mm. while I would apply for a new one, being in the country is a bad idea. But no, I've got I've got a bunch of friends in Toronto, right? So yeah, why, and people I wouldn't get to see without doing it. There isn't a positive, maybe not a net positive to yeah. losing the other people, but it, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, anyway, good luck to anyway, that so so yeah, so uh, Jordan would say it's uh, uh, good. And, um, you know, especially because you got a job and I would say it's good because you, you get to reinvent yourself. And especially if you're English and you're going to another <laughs> town that they don't have English accents, you'll yeah. stand out and be, look really attractive. Life hack. There you go. Life hack. If you're not, pretend. Uh, John, <laughs> thank you for being on the podcast. Thanks I appreciate you coming in. Um, do you have other things other than the sad boys that you want to plug at all? Um, I don't think so. I, All right. You know, I don't Talk do. Boys, then. No, I should do. do I'll it. tell people. Sad boys, people are already fucking listening to it. I'm sick yeah. to death of it. Um, find my channel, I don't like recording anything. But, well, people can probably tell that by the <laughs> frequency of releases. 
Uh, there's, there's some correlation between videos coming out when I'm contractually obliged to do an ad. Uh, who knows? <laughs> can I can I can I interrupt for a second? Yeah. I've been I've been uh, uh, recognized more from showing up in that one video that you made. That's right. Than my own show. Really? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I'm glad we got the video and the clip in there. That was, that was oh, God. So thank you for that. Hey, anytime. <laughs> yeah. I'll punch you in any context for your punch. Thank you. Photo. All right, great. I have that photo. I brought it from the UK. Oh, you're sweet. I need to find it. Thank That's you. a lot of boxes of storage stuff still. But um, um, yeah, go follow, go watch his videos. Go on, check it out. Check out YouTube. ARCS. A R C S. My old D&D pod. It's been three years since I did anything with it. Yeah. But I, I want to peep. Watching, literally watching Infinity Train just brought it to mind. And I, I, I you know, sometimes when you kind of almost like hanging out with uh, uh, friends from your childhood again, mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of traits of me in that show that I don't really identify with anymore. Even the mm -hmm. way I speak for that show is not quite the way I speak now. Yeah. And there's just so many experiences. A lot of them pretty like bad, but a lot of them good too that I just haven't had. I hadn't had then. And I feel, it feels like listening to me as a kid, right? But I, it was a lot of time. I do have a lot of pride in it. I did the DMing and all the music and stuff. And it yeah. go go check that out. It's you think you you think you'll bring that bring that back? Then a new project you'll do? Yes. You're, I, gonna, you're gonna try and take on Dimension Twenty or a, or a critical role? I want to destroy them. I want to absolutely yeah. fucking obliterate them. Uh, yeah. I will do anything in my power <laughs> to destroy them. I will yeah. access the Patreon security network and delete their yes. Patreon. In the yes, please do. Week. Um, yeah, yeah I, down a peg. What's the name of this show that we're doing? Uh, <laughs> so right now, it's called the Podcast of a Generation because Cast of a Generation is my bit. Mm -hmm. It might change, but I think that's what I'm going to go with. I don't know whether that rings true as a as a good name for a podcast, but other mm -hmm. than that, the other suggestion that my podcast friend told me is I do call it like something like "What Can I Get You" or something like that, which sounds a little bit too it sounds a little bit too like customer servicey, which is not the bit. Yeah, and like happy hour would imply booze, drinking, only. alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, then, yeah. Ooh, wet, wet sip. Wet sip with the boys. Right. Wet sip with the boys. Wet sip with the <laughs> wet wet boys with a Z. Wet boys. All right. Yeah. Okay. That's the uh, that's the after dark sad boys. <laughs> yeah, that's the even darker one. <laughs> yeah. Absolute the most sinister one. That's the OnlyFans exclusive oh, one. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one day, man, in a heart for charity or something, we'll just do like feet pics. Yeah. Oh, it, I'll the... say something. It'll be out by now. Yeah. This is week. This will be a weekly. Yeah, you're not going to be straight out. But are we more than like a month away? Two months yeah. away. Yeah, probably, probably, probably mid September at the earliest, earliest. Cool. Week, and you'll be like a few weeks after that as well. All right. We can do message me if you don't see it from Eddie already. Um, Eddie's dropping a new video really soon, and there's a shirt that he's dropping specifically associated with it. And let me see if I can show the photo right now. We did a merch shoot, me, Ethan Nesta, uh, nice. Jarvis, and Eddie. Yeah. We went around to we got this Airbnb and did a shoot by the pool. And a bunch of the, I don't have all the photos from the shoot yet, but <laughs> a ton of them we got our toes out for. And I think we Good have God. to, we're going to blur them maybe. <laughs> so it's like a bit. You don't want to end up on wiki feet? I'm already up there, baby. Oh, is it? Oh, Shit. yeah. Eddie's got a really good rating. Oh, oh it, it was Christ. maybe Ethan. Someone's got like a, a out of the five star possible, they have five yeah. and a half stars. Oh my God. Which I don't <laughs> completely understand. There you go. Oh, that's that's a cool shot. out, but then there's somewhere I feel, I feel like stuck up facing the camera. Uh -huh, uh -huh, I uh -huh. want to hopefully those drop because that is some of the sauciest material. That's this, exciting. Yeah, it's fun. It's a nice shirt. Go buy it. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just watched Drew. Uh, we've kind of ended the point. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you. We're just going to keep talking. But do you, say a thing, do you say a thing at the end? No, not really. I just kind of say thanks. Uh, uh, we don't do the like and subscribe thing because it's not YouTube exclusive. I resp I keep, it, keep, it, keep it wet, gamers. <laughs> Stay soggy, gang. All right. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>